All right. Well, welcome everyone to our adventure hot air balloon. Um, again, we are using just basic watercolors tonight, basic blue. Um, you can also add different colors though. I've had participants add pink, um, purple, all those things. Um, I've had them do it a little darker by adding um, black and blue, which is sort of this color. You can see that this is a little bit darker than this one. So feel free to experiment. It also depends on the watercolor set you have. I have basic Crayola that I'm using. So the blue is very much more towards like a teal blue. All right, so we're gonna start off with our drawing. And let me just make sure that I have this. There we go, I think that's better. Um, I wanna show you some examples first of some hot air balloons I found online. So your hot air balloon does not have to look like mine. Um, our basic shape is going to be a circle shape and then obviously it kind of tapers so more like a light bulb shape um and then that just depends on what you want to do with the design i did a very simple one here um it looks different here this is my original sample so as you can see i did it a lot lighter um and i added kind of the fire here inside the balloon but you can do as you wish. And I think I'm gonna see if I can kind of leave this up top so that you are actually able to look off of it. Let's see, oops, sorry about that. Let's see how I can do that. I'm gonna raise it up and we're gonna get started. So I'm gonna kind of move this around, trying to get it all in one shot here. Okay, so our basic shape. So first we're going to make sure we have enough room. I'm not sure that this is gonna really work. There we go. Um, we wanna make sure that we have enough room for our word. Um, it doesn't have to be adventure. It can be a saying if you like. Um, I just picked adventure because I always think of going on an adventure when you're in a hot air balloon, but you can pick something else. So you wanna make sure to kind of leave room here towards the bottom. Um, our balloon is gonna be in the upper right corner. Um, you can also change that if you like. You know, You can make it over here to the left maybe. Um, your adventure or whatever word or saying you're gonna have here, I have it um, sort of rounded. You can have it straight, you can have it kind of curvy. So I just wanted to put that out there. You can make this creative. So with that, we're going to get started now. All right, so towards the upper right corner of our paper here, we're gonna draw our balloon. So again, it's kind of very much like a circle. You can also, depending on how big you want it, you can make it bigger than mine. But I'm gonna start off with a circle. You also wanna make sure that yours is light. I'm making it darker for the sake of zoom. And I'm gonna kind of make it go like this. And the way I had it originally, I have two sections here. Let me just fix this line here. You can see that it's sort of curved here. Sorry about that. 
Looks like I got a phone call. I just send it to voicemail. In case any of you didn't know, I use my phone as my document camera. So every once in a while I get a call. I tell most people that I'm teaching, but sometimes they forget. That's okay. All right, so <laughs> it really does look like a light bulb right now. <laughs> we have a light bulb balloon. <laughs> and then we're going to create the basket. Basically, well, first we're gonna create the sort of top part of the basket. So we're gonna make a cylinder up here. And here again, if you want to create yours a little differently, please do. So here's the cylinder. And then these are actually the string part, sort of the strings part of the basket. And I'm making mine, I'm making mine rather large compared to how I made the other one. Yours doesn't have to be this large. And then our basket is gonna be attached to this. So here again, you can have fun with the basket, but you want the general shape to be something similar in the sense of, you wanna make sure it looks like it's curving. Yeah, as you can see, I went really big with this basket. Um, my sign here is going to be a little bit smaller. I kind of wanted it to be a little bit bigger, but if you want to shrink yours, um, it would be probably about this big rather than over here. But I kind of wanted to do a big one this evening. I'm just going to show you the difference. I think it's also easier to see on Zoom. Okay. And I just realized, excuse my um, my elbow here or my part of my arm here. I had some blood work done today. It looks like it looks like I hurt myself, but I did not. <laughs> OK, so now that you have that basic shape, you can also make the sandbags here at the bottom. Usually the one in the back is going to be smaller only from our view. And that's just because it's in the back. So here we are there. And we make two more on this side. And again, the one in the back is smaller because it's farther away. And I made this one really smaller on the right because um, it is kind of tilted and it would be a little bit smaller as well. So we're gonna start now creating the, you have the basic shape of the basket, or I'm sorry, of the balloon. And now we're gonna start making it a little fancier. So we can make some lines here in these two sections on the side, like so. I'm gonna go in a little bit closer here. Let me just to move my so basically here are the lines i'm going to make it a little darker here so you can see it and we're going to deal with the basket part first in this section here so also, 
I kind of make a strip right around here and also make those lines. And we're gonna add to our basket to make it look three dimensional, we wanna add a cylinder. And so by doing that, if you've made your basket like this with sort of a curve, you then add your cylinder like so. And then you can create your basket to look like anything. Um, so again, I created mine to look like this. So a basket weave and then with sort of a dot in the middle of each square. You can do it one of these ways. You can do something like that. Look at this fancy one, you could do that. And we're just talking about the baskets right now. You can even leave it plain if you like. So it is up to you, um, but here's how I do mine. And you could even leave it just striped. That would look kind of interesting. And you can see I'm curving my lines. And I think I'm gonna leave the dots out of this one. I kind of like it to look like an old time basket. Um, you know, I always think of like, you know, the World's Fair in the 1930s or something. Um, I've seen pictures and they had an old time hot air balloon, which I think is really neat. I love anything from the 30s and 40s and 50s. So I'm always kind of looking toward those eras. And then we want to actually think about our balloon. So when we come up here, I like to create some curving of the lines. And that's gonna go right here. And basically the lines curve from the left and as they start going towards the middle of the balloon, it gets a little bit straighter and then the direction changes for the lines. Like so. I'm gonna make this one just a little bit. A little bit more curved. So they change direction when you get over to the right side. And it will definitely give you that impression of the balloon having volume. I'm just kind of fixing my balloon here. There we go. I'm gonna add one more line here. And one more here. Mm, this line's a little crooked, so I'm going to fix it. Okay. And then I like to kind of add some flags um, and also some striping. So what I'm gonna do with that is I'm gonna start at the top of the balloon and come down just a little bit and make these curved sections on each long section like this. I'm gonna double that up. So there's one, I'm gonna skip some space 
and do the same. And I'm going to make one more down here. And then I like to have a bit of a cone area at the top. It looks like this. And again, you don't have to, but then I have a flag sticking out of there too. Again, you don't have to, but I just thought it was pretty fun to do that. I'm still fixing my, my section here, the balloon. There we go, that's better. That line was bothering me. <laughs> And then we want to connect all those lines. Um, basically, we can start on the edge of the balloon, right? And we're gonna make the strings. That string is gonna go through this section and down towards the basket. And then you're gonna make some lines that are coming from the back of the basket here. And then more, they're sort of off to the side on the right. You can make as many as you like. I'm gonna make mine a little less curvy. I don't know why I curved it in the first place. I think I was sort of looking over there and thinking of curves. That's better. And remember, you can kind of make little flags coming off of your portion the middle part of your balloon. But again, you don't have to. I just kind of make these little flags that are happening. And then you want to look over everything. Well, we're not going to use pen right now, so we still have time to sort of, you know, fix anything before we do that. But this is a good time to look over your balloon and see if you want to add anything. You also want to make sure um, to erase sort of the ball section down here, like the circle part. And then you can add some more sort of decoration here at the bottom, which is what I'm kind of doing. Forgot about that part. But this is where you can kind of give it your own character. I'm 
so excited to see what these are going to look like. And then we're going to get ready to create our sky. Um, and again, this is up to you, depending on what color blue you're using. If you have a basic set, you may have to, um, you know, uh, use different colors to make the color of blue that you want. Like I have a very basic set, the Crayolas. And so I'm going to kind of show, see my blue is very much, um, it looks darker actually in this, in the, in the palette, but it actually comes out more like this blue. And so we want to start with some light strokes. And we're going to kind of go around so that it's cloud-like. So I'm going to start here. And I think I'm going to make mine a little bit darker. So I'm going to add some purple to my blue. If I add purple, it's going to get darker, more like a royal blue. I could add a little bit of black, and then it will get more of like a gray blue but I think I'm going to use purple and blue and I get this kind of royal blue color. And we wanna use more water than anything. And I'm kind of going around in circles for the first layer. We want it to be light. I'm actually going in like sort of a C formation like this. And then I'll go back and add more circles. Again, I want it to be very cloud-like at first. You choose where you want that to end and the shape of what you want it to look like. It can go right up against your balloon. I'm going to add some more water here. And I'm going to leave the white of the paper in this section, just because that's what I kind of choose to do. But our first go around should be very light, and then you can add to it. Very wispy looking. Kind of fun to experiment. It was really fun using these metallic paints um, in my other um, in my other one. Um, they were just cheap metallic paints from the store five below. And I picked them up because they looked fun. I thought they'd be fun for a kid's project. But then I thought, you know what? I'm gonna try it out on this. So I did that one night and I taught. So again, um, you can experiment with how dark, how light you want it, where you want it to stop. I'm going back in now and adding a little more water so that it kind of spreads a little bit. And now I'm gonna start to darken it up a little. At this point, you can also add, you could add some purple. You can add, um, gosh, you can add green. You can make it, you know, more rainbow if you want. 
It's up to you. I'm going to start adding um, a little bit of an edge to each of sort of the parts of the clouds. Like so. This is where, you know, you can now go back in and kind of go around in circles with your color. You can switch brushes at this point. Um, I'm using, I forgot to mention, I was using my bigger round brush, but if you want, you can go in and start using your small round brush. It makes some really interesting, you know, cloud shapes. And a little more blue here. I want some of mine to be a bluish purple and then other times a little more purpley. The other fun thing you can do if you want to take away some of your, you know, parts in your balloon, you can use some clean water with a brush and swipe away and dab it on a paper towel. That's another neat thing you can do. I'm kind of doing that up here. I'm sort of erasing this part and you can see. So I took fresh water, I'm removing the color and then dabbing on a paper towel. And that makes sort of a cloud-like shape as well. Oops moving my paper all over the place here. I'm gonna do that here too. But when you're satisfied with it, we then let it dry. I'm still adding a few more clouds. You can also have it get a little bit darker, you know, in the back, if you want, in the back of your balloon. But our next step is letting it dry. And you can enlist the help of a fan or a, um, a, a hair blow dryer, or you can just kind of bounce it up and down like I'm going to do <laughs> for about five minutes. And it depends on how wet it is. I really like this section here with the purple and the blue. Part of me wants to add a little purple at the bottom, but I also want it to dry. <laughs> so <laughs> I think I'll forego a purple. So you can see that mine is still shiny, which means it's still wet. While we're waiting, if you want to get a, a beverage or a snack, because we want to make sure that these are dry. Okay, 
I said, a good five minutes is usually pretty good for these. Mine's definitely still a bit dry. I mean, a bit wet. <laughs> I was thinking dry. Still a bit wet. Um, but the really neat thing is putting pen to this and seeing it come, you know, come alive. Um, definitely in this one, I added birds, which is something else you can add. Um, you can add a little bit of a, um, you know, even rays of the sun. Um, but I like to kind of keep it simple, add a few birds. That was not in my original, but I thought it might be kind of fun for um, that one that I did. And we are getting there. So we also want to make sure it's dry just in case um, your pen is not water resistant because it will run. So we'll give it at least another three minutes. This may be drier than mine. Mine, um, I was really using a lot of the water so that I got a very translucent shade of blue. Um, the other thing is we can practice our lettering. Um, if you have a separate piece of paper with you, um, we can do that. I'm gonna go grab another piece of paper. And I'm just grabbing some printer paper over here. So this is a very thin pen. Um, you can also choose at this point to grab um, a thicker black pen, like a, a Sharpie marker. Um, you know, we're not really doing calligraphy, but we're doing fake calligraphy. I mean, if anyone has calligraphy pens or the ones that are, um, you know, the markers that have more of a square edge to them, you can use something like that too. Um, so you can have fun with this lettering, you know, like just showing different ways of creating the A. You can make it really fancy. You know, you can even make it something like this. Um, you can even just do this. And this is if you're writing the word adventure. You know, and what you would do is, you know, you can make it thicker on certain parts. You can fill it in, say in the corners here. So again, you know, you can have fun with the lettering. Um, you know, here's my very basic lettering for adventure. So I'm gonna put that up here and let's check our, let's check our balloons here. Mine is pretty dry. Yep. 
But we're going to start with um, the balloon anyway, um, you know, redrawing the balloon. So here again, you know, I'm going to use a very fine tip pen. If you want yours to be thicker, um, you can use a Sharpie marker or something thicker. Mine is very fine tipped. Um, you can do a combination of things or you can, you know, go over it again after you've drawn it first. But let's get started. So I'm going to start beginning here at the top. And we're just going to be recreating or I should say, um, you know, copying what we've drawn. And then we can go back and make you know, some textural designs, you know, or you could do it as you are drawing it, but I like to kind of redraw it first and then go back and color things in. So creating the balloon, you want to really take your time here since we are now using pen. And pen is rather unforgiving. <laughs> so just take your time and do your best. Kind of skipping around because I created flags. You know, and then you could start going towards the bottom of your balloon. You can also correct any lines at this stage if you see anything that maybe you wanna change. I just saw a line that I thought I could make it a little bit better so I went in and I changed it. All right so now I think I'm going to start with the basket as well. Again, just going very carefully. We're also going to be um, erasing all of our pencil lines when we're finished so that it's a nice, clean drawing. Just take your time as you're recreating your balloon here. Very carefully following the lines. It's 
connected, I decided to create some flags kind of in the middle on the top part. So I wanted to change my line work up a little bit. And as I'm starting to go over the lines in pen, I like to erase the pencil lines, but you can wait until after. This is just something I tend to do. And then remember to create the lines for the basket. both the hot air balloon lines and then also if you've added lines to your basket you want to do that too You know, and then we start decorating our basket or, you know, creating the detail. Um, and this is where you can start adding, um, you can add black for some of the stripes. You can also start to add some fine lines of shading to the basket. So I'm gonna go really close now that we are in the finishing stages here. So I like to add some fine lines going down the sides. So 
some cross hatching and hatching. Basically, you know, adding more detail, making some of the lines a little darker. You know, think of it as, you know, your pencil. Making spots darker, usually around the sides, like so. Um, inside the basket might be a little darker. As a matter of fact, it would be. You want to create the illusion of depth. So you can cross hatch, which means first you go one way with your lines and then to make it even darker you go you cross your lines so you go the opposite way or you could just go one way with your lines and keep repeating you know going over and over your lines in order to get it darker. So I'm doing a little of that now. So in order to get that a little darker, I'll just kind of show it up close. You can see that I have cross hatched but I've made it really dark and you don't have to make it that dark on everything. I'm gonna make it a little darker here. So this is where we really start to, you know, create all the detail, all the finishing touches to this balloon. You know, maybe I make it a little darker around the cylinder here. And then where these cylinders meet the balloon. I like to make the line a bit thicker here because it's kind of connecting and the same with in the middle here. So when you put emphasis on a line, meaning you make it darker, it's going to do one of two things. It's gonna make it stand out. And then also you can create um, proportion with it. Um, by me using, you know, making this line darker, it now reads, you know, your drawing, my drawing kind of reads that it is, um, has volume and is going around. I'm also gonna do that by doing some light cross hatching or some hatching right here on the side. You can go up and down with your strokes or you can go left to right. I'm gonna make it a little bit darker here as well. I 
Um, also, if you like this sort of art, you can let me know. Um, you can either give me a thumbs up or, um, you know, in the chat, you can put, you know, more of this. Um, I've had quite a few people that have reached out um, because they really like the, the ink drawings. Um, so I'm going to be adding more ink drawings in the winter as well. But, you know, let me know what you think. Um, so now I'm going to go to the basket section. And again, you know, I'm going to, you know, make the sandbags a little bit darker on the top. You know, and to get a little bit lighter, you just add one, you know, one section of lines. And then to get a little darker, you go over it again. Again, it's like shading. You know, so you can really make this very, um, very much detailed to how you would like it. And I'm going to come up here and I'm going to add in some more coloring with my pen. My pen is very, um, very thin. Um, so the other thing is, if you have different sizes of pens, you can use, you know, a thicker pen in order to fill it in faster if that's what you want and also for different sections. People that get very much into um, the pens um, use, you know, by different sizes. And usually using the Micron pens, they're called Micron, those are really nice. Um, I'm just using something I picked up from Amazon in bulk. Um, and it is a 0 0.38 millimeters, which is very thin. I'm gonna make my flags a little bit darker. And then again, you know, you can go down to your basket and again, make some fine lines for shading. You know, if it's, you know, you're making it basket weave, you know, you can take your lines and make them a little bumpy, sort of in between, because it's, you know, when you're weaving, it's strips of um, usually a very thin wood or like a bamboo or um, not sure exactly what kind of wood they would use, but So, so the pen takes a little while, but it looks nice. 
Um, let's see, I'm going to add some light shading here in the middle. And then a little more cross hatching here on the sides to give it some perspective. Now, if you are ready for your word or words, I'm not sure if you're doing the same word as I am or you're doing um, poem. Um, what I do first is I do it in pencil. I don't go right to pen. Again, the pen is unforgiving. <laughs> I'm recopying my lines in between. Um, I want to make them thicker to make it look like there's a bit of a shadow as the balloon um, sections are here. And maybe I'll do some more shading up here. Okay. A little shading up here where my flag is. Okay. And again, you can do all sorts of, you know, you can do more detail to this. You can also make designs on your balloon um, if you want. Um, I'm just looking at the other one here. And it's got some pretty neat designs here on the side. This. Gonna add some really light. Some light designs here. On every other part of my balloon. Then I'm also going to look to see how I want my adventure word to be. Because I've made it so big, I think I'm going to have adventure go this way. So I'm going to make, draw a line of where I'm going to write the word adventure. I kind of curve it around. And I'm going to start writing my word. In pencil. And then add the pen.
I'm going to make a few flourishes on this. Again, I am not a calligrapher. I wish I was. But I'm just making it a little bit fancy here. Going a little thicker in parts. I'm just kind of having fun with it. Which is what I did the first time. Just kind of had fun with it. And then again, if you want to add some birds, they are just little V's. You know, the ones that are further away, you want to make tiny. If you want. I have a gold pen. So, it, you know, if you also want to add some color, you could do something like this too. I have gold pen from our other um, the seahorse one. I just realized I think I'm supposed to send to you Bobby and I don't think I I don't think I sent that yet so I think I have to send you the seahorse thank you you're welcome it's on my it's on my to-do list <laughs> and I just reminded myself <laughs> by thinking about the gold pen so I'm very curious to see what everyone's looks like. Um, I think I'm going to stop the recording at this point. Ooh.